Hello my soccer universe, a rare daytime video these days, but I decided to take a break from home office and record this video to just to get it out because it's, yeah, things are piling. I want to do a Champions League preview as well in the evening. I want to do a Europa League preview already. So, you know, uh, things are piling and I better get stuff out before I get back to work. I am wearing my... Uh, Jersey that I get a lot of reaction to, the Benfica home jersey from 8990. Uh, one, of my fav one of my faves definitely uh, in the collection. Uh, it's the oldest one I have in the collection, it's not the oldest one in my collection, meaning I don't have it for, for the longest, that's just got it recently. Let's talk a little bit La Liga and Ligue 1 and then a little bit Liga Nosh. Um, the Bundesliga was rather uneventful. <laughs> La Liga, boom, boom. Um, except for one team, all the big boys lost. Everyone that plays in the Champions League lost. And for some, even the jerseys were as bad as their performances. Let's get to it. Um, the first surprise is already Granada beating Sevilla with a late goal, but this was hugely hampered by Irada Piki. Yellow red for Jordan, who within a minute gets two fouls. And the first yellow, yes, but the second, he's basically running into the guy. The referee just should have said it. Okay, you know, uh, please be careful, but not send, send him off. And that kind of changed the complexity of the game and complexion, not complexity. Maybe the complexity as well. Who knows? Um, and Granada get their late winner through Herrera. Yeah, one of those games that Sevilla rather wants to forget. Um, Celta Vigo cannot score goals. The only one that can score goals is Iago Aspas, but you also thought that Atletico Madrid cannot really score goals. No, they have a certain Luis Suarez who opens the scoring in the sixth minute. Then, you know, game maybe a little bit more Vigo's way, but in the, in the end, Atletico Madrid, very uh, mature performance. Carrasco late on secures the win to make it 2-0. Uh, nothing spectacular, but you know, you get the win. Atletico Madrid needed to get uh, final, final, final win, win again after having so many draws. And then we already had Real Madrid, who played at home against Cadiz in pink. Literally, why? If you play a way to uh, Cadiz in pink, maybe I can get on board with that. Uh, Cadiz surely has an away jersey. Yeah, I haven't even thought about the Liga jersey review because you know the things are so jam packed at the moment. And but I, I'll get to it. I'm sure they have a away jersey. I'm fairly certain it will be blue. You can play in white. This is purely commercial reasons to push this pink away jersey, which. Um, or third jersey, I have to say. Uh, yeah, we saw it already against Manchester City. It doesn't get better. Literally. I mean, uh, Real Madrid is really going down the Barcelona way of choosing every year a different color or the Juventus way that doesn't make any sense. This or the black one. Great choices for Real Madrid. Um, but no. Not pink. I'm sorry. Now that you don't have half Ronaldo, you lost all your reason to play in pink. Anyway, uh, we cannot talk much about Real Madrid anyway because they played so badly. They played so badly. They should have been down by three when Negredo scored in the 16th. And there was no fight fighting them. They were <laughs> literally four changes at halftime. Yes, Ramos uh, was injured, but the rest... Zidane was not happy. And yeah, he cannot be happy. I'm curious what they will do in the Champions League uh, very, very soon. But just when you thought Real Madrid played badly, well, Barcelona said, we'll up you one. Barcelona also played in the most un-Barcelona kit I've ever seen. And Barcelona is really famous uh, for always choosing weird, weird, weird colors. And coincidentally, I have some weird colors for Barcelona coming in my collection soon. But I think they are, um, how to say, they are acceptable colors for Barcelona. I can even get on board with the 
pink because I actually, as you know, the two tools ago, I actually liked this pink away jersey so so much that I would have gone. This was an all pink look. I even could get on board with the pink, maybe with black uh, bottom. But then the turquoise socks with it, that has no rhyme or reason. The turquoise socks have, have, have even a pink outline. There's just too many colors, too many colors. I, I would, you know, pink, maybe put turquoise pants and turquoise socks to make it a little bit, but the socks seem to be completely out of place. And yeah, it fit a little bit also with their performance. And I think we will see a lot of this kit because the proper bar survey jersey, the black one, provides too little contrast to the current home jersey. So I really see them using this pink one a lot, a lot. I call it a Miami Vice kit. Wait for the kit for the jersey review. It was one of those games where Barcelona is just so un Barcelona like. Uh, yes, Messi hits the post. Yes, they have more chances. But get off of us, what get off of us. Uh, shut up shop, beef is beef, 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 physically. Get a penalty and get out the win. Um, late on, uh, their um, defensive uh, boss hit the bar for Barcelona, but before that, uh, there were two huge chances for bar, uh, for um, uh, for Getafe to actually get the win through Cucci Hernandez. First, he did a thunder shot. He also hits the bar, where uh, Neto, who played in goal for um, the injured uh, Terra thing, just got his hand on and then made it on to the bar. And then a little bit, uh, three acres of space and too much time to think and puts it, you know, a field goal uh, up there. I actually have, have, have it to say, give him everything. I mean, uh, there, there was also a similar miss by Griezmann that just needs to be made. And, you know, Griezmann a little bit too mouthy, uh, saying, yeah, at the national team, they know how to play me. And maybe, but this chance has nothing to do with your position. You can put this away and put your doubters, uh, uh, you know, in place for a while. Not a good performance. Yes, Messi had also a great chance at the end, but Messi was um, almost a non-factor in, in his game too. Um, from just what we saw on Saturday, I think no one is trying to make a statement who is the best team in La Liga. And I have to say, Real Madrid and Barcelona look so vulnerable that if one of those two will become champions this season, Everyone else should just pack it and go home. I mean, this is made for a different champion. Absolutely made. And I'm looking especially at teams that are not playing necessarily in Europe or, uh, you know, don't take it that seriously. Sunday X was uh, comparatively tame because all the big headlines, and this was also because, um, a theme of the weekend. Most of the big teams are played on uh, Saturday because of the Champions League to give the uh, teams uh, sufficient rest. Uh, I saw a little bit of the second half of Athletic uh, Bilbao against Levante and I have to say Bilbao uh, really uh, showed a, had a good showing. Uh, should have led much much sooner before Berenguer with uh, a goal of the will. He <laughs> pulls it in in the 68th. A few minutes later, uh, he gets off offside. One of those super marginal decisions where you wonder how and why. Um, and then Williams taps it in from close range. And uh, it is an easy 2 0 win. And they're finally uh, getting a win again because I got really, really worried about Bilbao. Worries we need to also extend to Valencia. Uh, Paco Alcacer, Alcacer. Uh, uh, penalty very early on, clear foul there. Um, and we are all really dominating proceedings, but then uh, Gedesh with a really nice shot from outside the box uh, after I think it was a corner kick or so, uh, gets the equalizer in the 37th. And then Dani Parejo, who was chased away from um, Valencia, gets the winning goal should have been more, but Villarreal got also a um, late red card, although that, that probably didn't, it was nice, nine, I think, didn't have much impact on the game anymore. But yeah, Villarreal getting the, winning the Derby de la Concom Comunidad and justifying it. I've been looking for a jersey of theirs as of late, although I'm afraid that Villarreal might go a little bit the way of Depor, you know, being really, really up there all the time and suddenly fall for the following way, I will never need this jersey again. Who knows? Uh, 
And then I saw the highlights of Betis versus that, which uh, with a very clear scoreline, but uh, the game was not as, as clear. Yes, in the first half, uh, Betis did not really show up all, all the much. Porto gives versus that. Uh, very deserved lead uh, after Oyar Sabal assist. But in the second uh, half, it was actually Betis who had chances and there was probably the most contentious offside decision um, of uh, the Spanish evening. Uh, similar to the one that happened um, at Goodison, where because of the new rule that the handball starts here, they draw now the line a little bit further down, uh, which makes it even more curious uh, of an offside uh, decision. And so Betis doesn't get the offside and then uh, it is a foul of, I think it was Bartra on Isaac. Uh, and uh, a foul and Oyer Sabal makes it 2-0 uh, and then lay, lay down Isaac as his Janusai to make it 3-0 and Real Sociedad now is top of the table. That's how they play the Europa League, so I'm not sure if they qual qualify for, you know, uh, one of those teams that could get in there, but at least they're having a smidgen of a chance to at least make it in in into the Champions League. The table's still rather uneven because there are so many makeup games in there. That's why Barcelona is down at ninth and also Atletico Madrid is only at eighth. Um, and Real Madrid, yes, they have a loss, but uh, just hand them a game, a win in that game, Real Madrid would be top of the table and add Barcelona um, six more points if they would win. I mean, it's not a given in either of these cases, the way they're playing. And Barcelona is also right there with Atletico Madrid, uh, who would actually be top of the table in that scenario. So yeah, um, as I said, it's a rather uneven table still, but um, it is what it is. Um, on the bottom, quite some movement. I'm getting worried about Valladolid also, um, a team that I've been looking because I really like their jerseys this season. Now they go, they are going down, Celta, uh, yeah, Celta needs to score goals. Uh, Bilbao, le, let's see how they will move out of there. And on top, yeah, it's Andalusia, but not the teams that you will expect. Actually, at the moment of the four Andalusian teams, it's Sevilla who is the worst one. Of course, Sevilla has only four games instead of uh, the six that Cadiz have. In the next round, we have the Classic of Misery. And I would love if they play pink against black. Absolutely would love that one because uh, it would be just fitting. This is not the Barcelona we know, this is not the Real Madrid we know. They should actually play in, dif in different jerseys to completely hide the fact that this is the biggest game in the world. Not between the two biggest teams. I, I find them both so horrible at the moment. It's unbelievable. Um, I also think that Atletico Madrid against Betis, although Betis just got, got a beating, not a bad match, matchup to see. Um, what else is in there? Uh, Getafe Granada. That's a sleeper right there. You, it's not a uh, one that you will say, okay, I have to watch that one, but I think that's a definite sleeper in there. Let's move to France. Uh, just when I posted the video or this kind of preview. Um, I saw the result of Dijon Rennes, who are, what already happened. I don't know why France played already on, on Friday evening. I said Rennes should get an easy win at Dijon. No, it was not an easy win at all because it didn't get a win. Terrier gets them a goal. Rennes uh, dominated proceedings in the first half and the second half they a little bit left off and Balde uh, gets a deserved equalizer for Dijon, uh, who then hang on because in the last few minutes uh, Rennes just cannot find the winner. PSG, easy win. Definitely helped by a red card through to, uh, for Landre in the 12th minute. Uh, that also has to be said for, uh, I think, uh, got Rafinha down. Uh, but then PSG ran riot and just didn't con convert. Mbappé, with a wonderful pass, scores a wonderful goal. Um, PSG also with a lot of uh, injured players from international duties, or you know, ne Neymar coming back, jet lagged, jet lagged from Brazil. So they kind of say, yeah, let's play it uh, easy. The 77th, Florenzi finally gets a second goal, a goal that, that was already ready coming. I think Moise Ken is a new signing that also had a few chances. Mbappé gets a second one and uh, those all assisted by Sarabia, uh, those last two, and then Sarabia gets the last one. 
uh, after an assist from Dagba in the 88th. Very well deserved victory for PSG. Uh, in the big clash between Marseille and Girondin, at least from the uh, names, it was the Florian Tauvin show with a wonderful win in the fifth minute. Uh, he makes it 1 0. He then misses a penalty, uh, was, uh, no, was saved. Um, he should have scored. He had chances to score a hat trick in that first half. He then assists uh, Amavi in the 54th to make it 2 2 0, and an on goal by Pablo seals the deal. Bordeaux conceding more goals than they had in the whole season so far, so that's also. Um, remarkable, they get only a late consolation. 3 1 winners for Marseille. Um, yesterday in the afternoon, I stumbled on Strasbourg against Lyon. It was actually a great game. Lyon seemed to cruise to an easy victory thanks to being clinically finishing with uh, every chance being a goal. Uh, Cadavere in the 12th, it can be in the 25th, and then again, it can be in the 42nd, make it 3 0. But right after the 3 0, Diallo. Finally gets a goal for Strasbourg, who had been knocking, they had been knocking, should have made a goal earlier, didn't. It's 3-1 Lyon. They get in the 56, the 2-3, and were pressing for an equalizer that would have been fully deserved, but Lyon hang on and after a 3-0 lead. Yeah, we know other teams that had a 3-0 lead, they gave, they gave it up. Not talking to anyone, Jose. Um, in particular, but yeah, they hang on and uh, Lyon also gets a win again. Um, we have a few other interests where I think that there was a Breton tower between Nantes and Brest or Alcetien uh, having a great start and then since then taking a nosedive uh, ever since uh, they won at the Velodrome. 3 1 uh, lost at home to Saint Alcetien and now Lille against Lens. That was a top duel. And may I say that Lens, the pen sponsor, is the most perfect sponsor I've seen. I've seen. Lance with their yellow and red jerseys and black pants and then the McDonald's on there. That's perfect. <laughs> I have not seen a more perfectly applied sponsor where the club's colors fit the product's colors. But it was all Lil. It was all Lil. Yilmaz uh, was a really nice... There was a free kick in where he's standing miles offside, but uh, over two stops the ball then finds uh, comes to him because no one is... Um, Take, 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 take care of him. Make May makes one in Bamba very early in the second half. Max uh, May makes two at that point. The derby was decided more or more as a nice uh, Tifo with We Love Lil, We Hate Loss. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward, I have to say. Uh, then a yellow red for a Grady for Loss um, and Ikone. At a third, and then a straight red for Mich uh, Michelin. Yes, uh, came to Jojan, frustration. That was a, a, hor a horrible tackle. And so, yeah, Ziki can add a fourth, and Lille is 4 0 winners. So, in League 1, Lille with that win is now top of the table, and PSG is right behind. And note that Rennes has not lost yet, but they had now too many draws. I think they had two draws in a row, and that kind of that, that's how you lose the top, the top of the table. And PSG now had two big wins in a row, and it seems like they are on a roll again to cruise through the league. Horrible start, but now they're cruising, and the Champions League is where they will be judged. Lots of movement except on the, on the bottom, uh, the, on the bottom four did not change at all. And we already see a little bit that the last three teams are really cutting off. And yeah, I would love, I would hate to see Strasbourg and Reims uh, disappear. But you know, we have to see uh, how things pan out. Everyone will move on. And yes, I have, because I've been to those towns. That's why I have some, a little bit more connection in there. Um, Marseille is kind of hanging in there, but at, at the moment it seems Lille, uh, really PSG will cruise through and then maybe Lille, Nice, Lens, Marseille. I don't think a Lens will stay up there very much and I have to see what Lyon is doing because Lyon maybe could get up there as well. And then let's finish in oh no, like next round. Uh, PSG Dijon will be easy. We have Rennes against Angers. Uh, Marseille plays Lorient. Uh, who at home have been strong. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Lyon, Monaco is the big one. Nice, Lille is also uh, kind of an interesting ma matchup. So let's see where this, uh, what games will turn to turn out to be noteworthy. And now we go to Portugal. 
and we start of course with Sporting against Porto which was a very interesting game. Sporting really coming out flying and should have scored maybe earlier than Santos in the ninth. The problem is that you let Porto a little bit off the hook and then Uribe can get an equalizer and they even get through Corona, uh, the lead before they have a little bit flat, flattering at, at, at that point. However, Sporting eventually finds its way back. The second half was definitely more uh, controlled by Porto and late on they try to get forwards and get an equalizer through Vieto. Meaning, Porto dropped against points, which opened the door for Benfica and they go straight in. Waldschmidt in the sixth uh, and then stoppage time of the first half against Rio Ave was already 2-0 two, two and then very late on Gabriel seals the deal. We have a Monday game uh, that yeah, I'll tell you about next week. Uh, how it ended between Boavisio and Guimaraes, but before that game, we have now Benfica having already a pretty substantial five-point lead um, in the league, which means they are very much odds on now to become champions. Uh, also in the Champions League, and it's really Benfica, Porto, and then the rest of the league. Let's see if Sporting can do anything. I personally have my doubts. I mean, even last can beat Sporting like that. So. That was my roundup from Western Europe. Let me know what games you saw, how you liked the uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid pink jer jerseys. I have, I have to say maybe the Real Madrid look over is better because they're a little bit more unified, but I think uh, that they played in a home game in pink is just for me unfathomable. Anyway, give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day!